Hey guys, welcome to game two between RTG and How Dare You. This is going to be on Tau Cross again. I actually looked it up and I'm like, is this all boomer maps? And that's <laughs> Sony and Chad's like, hey, don't hate, don't hate the boomer maps. But yeah, it's, we got a lot of old school ones. Also, Blindside, I looked it up, is from, so the Shinhan Tank Pro League, which is put together by Caster Muse. Caster Muse is another guy I shouldn't, I, sh I should have mentioned earlier. I shouldn't have neglected to mention. I guess that was a better way to put that. He has put together all sorts of stuff. He's very heavily actively involved with uh, Team Think Quick and really is a big bridge between the foreigner and Korean community. Five o'clock location, we have How Dare You as the green Zerg. And yeah, game one was really exciting. That almost looked like a Chobo League. And I don't mean this insulting as like, oh, that low skill level. It was more like a Chobo League match in that it was just unpredictable and crazy and all over the place. And very exciting as a result. Very fun. Also, a little bit of things that happened in chat in the interim. CPL Season 7, actually, my guess is, is by the time this gets uploaded, CPL Season 7 will well be underway. But sometimes they have like late sign-up options for people that are dropping out. I say I'm not going to sign up because last season I was a total potato and just didn't. I just got very distracted with other things. And now I'm casting and have even less time, it feels like. Like, I try to focus the time on casting overall. Over, looks like we're probably going to see a 12 hatch here, by the way, from How Dare You. We do see no front door seal from RTG once again, which just feels dangerous. He, I don't think he's going to pay for it this time. He still might with the Zergling Flood after this. But anyway. Point being, CPL Season 7's up, so if you're a good player and feel like you could coach, get involved. Otherwise, if you just want to learn the game, uh, go do that. I encourage everybody to do so, so that way you can look at my commentaries and be like, ah, why doesn't he say this thing? And just get more enjoyment out of the game altogether. Slowly teaching people to have more knowledge and be better than me, which honestly is not that high a barrier. Should stop insulting me. We're seeing maybe a factory build, so early refinery. So maybe a 1-1-1, one, 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 which might explain the lack of a front door seal. How dare you scouting the upper left-hand corner first? He should be able to sneak into this base and get a scout from there. The stereotypical response to this has been either two-hatch mute or two-hatch two hatch or three-hatch Hydra. We'll see. First Marine being produced. It is possible there's some other sort of sneaky tech. Supply Depot now being created to create a blockade. Is this drone going to get there in time before that block's sealed? Overlord following the corner of the map just to make sure he doesn't get wiped out. There is a Marine there. So this, unfortunately for How Dare You, coming into the dark, might not have this scouted out. Maybe he can slip that gap. SCV right there, microing it around the corner. And this is not, this is the thing, with that Overlord, you don't want to sacrifice it. Critically though, he sees that there's no barracks up here, which might be a signal of something fishy. SCV scout making its way into the main. Zerg extractor. And how dare you might actually play this 2 edge play just preventatively, knowing kind of the recent meta. We'll have to see, though. Initial two Zerglings being produced. We do see that factory online. So three Marines, a Vulture, and then usually see a Starport and a Wraith to kind of deal with any sort of... to have some of the, the anti-air options. Yeah, we are seeing 2 hatch play, it looks like. Now the question is, is it 2 hatch Hydra or 2 hatch Muta? Had a brief pause right there, looks like. Which is going to leave that Zergling AFK. Do your job, Zergling. Ooh, and I take it back. We have one... Okay, never mind. For a second there, I thought that drone was going to potentially... Nope, I take it back. Upper right hand base, we have another hatchery. Which suggests me to play, but also... Well, command center being built to follow this up. And a machine shop. So rather than initial vulture, which honestly could have gotten an immense amount of damage done, this is an odd build. Command center immediately following this up. And a machine shop. Maybe for Vulture Speed? Something along those lines? SCV taken out the main. I believe it saw that layer being produced. So this is going to look like 2 hatch layer from RTG's perspective. Oh, that Overlord might get taken out. Oh, that Overlord needs to hurry up and get to that. These, S these Marines being a bit lazy. Missing an opportunity to get a kill here. So machine shop's up. I want to see what gets upgraded here. And an armory up. So... Never mind. Going to go for Goliath. Okay, there's the initial vulture. Lair has plopped down. Still no tech that I see anyplace. There's the Hydra list end, so it's going to be three hatch Hydra. Which is pretty decent against mechs. Second factory being plopped down. And I assume we're going to see early weapons one, also an engineering bay. 
Now the question is, is does, with the Vulture Scout, does How Dare You spot, or sorry, does RTG spot the fact that he's going up against a Hydralisk build? Because you have a lack of scan here, right? So lack of detection, which can be dangerous if there's the Lurker follow-up. Looks like that Vulture getting caught against some Zerglings initially. This tips things off to How Dare You that he's going up against Mech overall, or some variation on it, running these Zerglings back to the main. I don't think this Vulture has enough health to get scouting information otherwise, but if he checks this upper right-hand corner, this is a completely naked hatchery. And it looks like it is headed that direction. Zerglings being, being upgraded, vehicle plating, and mines being upgraded. Lurker aspect being upgraded. And I think this is going to be several dead drones, unless we get a creep colony. And actually, creep colony would be better than a Hydralisk, because Hydralisk kind of tips your hand, right? So I'm almost hoping to see a creep colony rather than something else. A mine being planted right there. Vulture now finding this base. Vulture taking actually a bit of base damage from the drone alone. The drones fleeing for their lives. Trying to draw back. Not able to get a creep colony down. So no economic output, but the larvae are still there. Turrets across the base. But keep in mind, ventral sacs being upgraded. Potentially a slow drop in the main once again, and this could be even more devastating if they're able to land on that factory line because there is no scan So it's going to be detection from the turrets alone And this is a much smaller surface area to if you get the lurkers in position right there And they're blowing up anything that lands like that that could be game Some drones being produced here very oh, and we did see a hydralis produced in that upper right hand corner It's not what got the kill the zergling got the kill Zerglings flooding in straight into the main where were the Marines and the Goliaths? Completely out of position. Flooding in, creating some disruption at the natural expansion. They're going to be cleaned up fairly quickly and easily. Honestly, not that big a hit from RTG. RTG in a great position. He's way ahead in supply. He's got a beefy army that continues to build. All he has to do is survive this drop. Overlord in position to do the drop. Armory building in. There is a turret there to that lower corner. This is kind of the critical thing is, is if the lurkers get, if sufficient lurkers get to that corner in that slow drop. Carapace being upgraded. Upright hand base starting to produce. But overall, economically, RTG's ahead, plus he has a really big beefy army. And that's going to require some sunken colonies to fight, or in the upper right hand corner, significant amounts of hydralisks to fight. Drop upgraded. Lurkers making their way across. Speed being upgraded as well. Big critical moment. Goliath not in position on the front. Barracks is going to see these lurkers on the low ground. It looks like there is a response. So that's at least going to keep them off the factory line. But are they going to be in time and do they have the range to deal with those SCVs? Oh. No SC so two SCVs killed initially. There's still a lot of supply depots that can be taken out. And this is going to be the tough part is building the missile turrets to kind of slowly build into this lurker line. Oop. One lurker taken out already. This turret, I believe, provides some detection. That Goliath providing some distraction, but more lurkers being dropped all over the place. Academy trying to be trying to get built, but I must say I don't think that's gonna happen. So how dare you able to do a lot of disruption as far as the main base goes? And might be able to get well, it depends on how long it takes. Might be able to get some additional tech and other minerals wasted otherwise. However, even with this, he needs to follow up with a pretty sizable attack force, because otherwise these Goliaths are just going to run over that army. And honestly, I, I'm surprised he didn't build the academy up here to the north. So how dare you? Not in a bad position, but he needs to follow it up with something. Getting level 1 weapons. No additional drops happening, so it's just these two lurkers. That's being repaired. Additional turrets being built underneath. Might be able to... Is there going to be a, a cancellation? No cancel... Okay, I think that was a cancellation on that academy. I didn't get a good look at the mineral line. Lurker lifting up, it getting wiped out. There's only a single lurker left in the base. Now, as all things settle, How Dare You is still sitting at 50 supply to RTG's 79 with that SCV kill. RTG still has a very beefy mech army. He's just relying on the fact that RTG isn't attacking him right now and is sitting back trying to defend these drops and that there's basically a lack of comsat to try to disrupt a lot of this. More lurkers being dropped on that corner, and that's basically what's keeping him in this match. Second Overlord very quickly wiped out. Or sorry, Second Lurker and Overlord very quickly wiped out. 
and but it's working out for him because even though RTG has this very very strong mech army it is sitting at home base dealing with this harassment rather than pressing forward and taking out these additional bases or slowing how dare economy down however comparatively okay now it's starting to move on comparatively how dare you needs to use this opportunity to go ahead and macro up to deal with this mech army so it's going to be a race between macro and initiative and i don't know maybe a dash of luck dash of the brood war spirit phenomenized carapace right there rtg briefly in the red with that supply depot kill a defensive mine there on that front corner and comsat is up and Goliaths, eh, if they don't, they, they take out Lurkers pretty quickly with range. Ugh. However, maybe more Goliaths than needed to to die there on the front. Hydalus pressing in to Siege Tanks, working on that Engineering Bay, able to take that Engineering Bay out. So at least putting more pressure on to keep RTG back. Continue to macro up, getting an additional hatchery. He needs to drone up, though, and again, get a large enough army to press against this. Because I still feel like RTG can just unsiege, walk across the map, and win from there. Another engineering being, be, being built. Let's see if he makes his way towards science vessels. Because that would kind of be, the honestly, the nail in the coffin if it had been built a while ago at this stage. Lair is up. Queen's Nest being plopped down to make the way towards tech. This mine still is not triggered. And now how dare you gathering up with some additional over overlords and hydralisks maybe to go for a more powerful drop in the main. Now here's the thing. As how dare you's army grows and as he has drop, mech is very immobile. So he's still with that threat where he can continually drop in the main if it's a sizable enough attack force and he has enough to kind of whittle down that mech army in the interim, which he's getting towards that point. This is not a bad counter to mech because mech is super slow, super immobile. Zerg can be everywhere. Basically get additional expansions and kind of play something like the gorilla style and just kind of have those counter drops potentially in the back corner. It looks like some Goliaths and some turrets and some mines being placed to deal with that potential. But still RTG sitting at 110 supply versus 85. Plus he's got that Well, actually, I take it back. He's behind in the overall upgrade crown. A couple queens being produced, which are very good against mech. Hive tech being upgraded. Spawn broodling is fantastic. Plus, if you get a pair, even with just parasite, you can keep an eye on that mech army. But spawn broodling, very good against siege tanks. I don't think that is going to be upgraded or in position, though, before RTG is starting to move out. He's got significant army, scanning forward, taking out a single lurker. Now is really the moment of truth. Sieging up. That's a lot of siege tanks. Elias pressing their way behind. The Hydalus moving back, eating a lot of shells. Honestly, might want to have just uh, loaded up those overlords and tried to re-engage. Mech is very slow. So How Dare You does have some time to, yeah, regather that army, build mass, and dive into it, perhaps a second time. Charm Booster being upgraded. Vulture speed being upgraded to get vultures, I guess, in the fight a little bit faster for reinforcements. More Hydalus being picked off without engaging any of this mech and slowly being pushed towards the main. Some Overlords being picked off as well. That's going to put, how dare you, close to... No, I take it back. He's a little close to the red, which is not where he... Which would be disaster for him. Yeah, 100 out of 100 supply with this mech. Brief counterattack. Siege tanks are there to engage it, along with some mines. And it looks like the overlords getting caught. Yeah, now in the red. And these hydalus being picked, and I think that I think that might be losing those overlords might have been the killing blow here. Because now, how dare you? Is stuck at 91 supply as RTG's army continues to grow both in size and strength. Does have level two carapace, so that's something. Looks like he is setting up to take another base. RTG is going to go ahead and build. A command center right there but this is a very very strong mech army bearing down on how dare use main and i just don't think he has enough raw units especially if he can get in, in a cohesive position to engage to fight this off 
Lurker's getting splatted. At least able to force the Siege to buy a little bit more time. The Overlords now are in place to build some more units, but again, I just don't know that he's going to have enough supply to fully engage this. The Goliaths honestly do pretty well alone, but now the Queen Army moving up. They do have some Spawn Broodlings. Fortunately, only one Spawn Broodling out of that entire force. Hive is up. Adrenal Glands being upgraded. But how dare you moving to the back towards the main? Let's see. Yeah, there's just not a lot of, enough energy. Spawn Broodling is a very expensive spell. And those Goliaths with the Charon booster upgrade and the range still might be sufficient to kind of press into this. Five siege tanks, a bunch of Goliaths, and reinforcements coming. Natural expansion exposed. Lurkers being morphed. Another spawn broodling in that back corner, but honestly, I don't. Yeah, it's just not going to be sufficient. Another two spawn broodlings. Yeah, still don't think it's going to be sufficient. These lurkers just look like they're going to burrow immediately just to get devastated. Although they clear out a lot of the Goliaths, the Goliaths not moving back. And as I say, the queens aren't enough. They're actually moving up and very quickly whittling down this siege tank force through additional spawn broodlings. So ignore what I said. Plenty of queens with plenty of energy. So how many queens is this overall? Going to get a good look at the count. Looks like we have nine queens. And honestly, because RTG playing it maybe a little bit too slow, a little bit too sloppy. Allowing how, how dare you to sit in this match. He lost his natural expansion. Should be able to reestablish that quickly. Could probably take another base here. Is moving some Hydalisks to the north. Another Siege Tank army moving its way across. There are a lot of Goliaths, a lot of Vultures in that composition. A lot of Siege Tanks. But those Siege Tanks, potentially Broodling Bait. I actually should look up how long it takes for, like, what's the specific time for energy to, to fill in for Spawn Broodling. But here's the thing, RTG still sitting at 144 supply. Hydralis dropping with a Lurker, that Overlord is going to get, well, okay, does manage to get that Lurker out. Think how Darius is actually playing this really well, considering how far behind he is just in overall macro. He's really making this a match. I mean, he's at 88 supply versus 139. But you can see he's just delaying, 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 forcing RTG back, keeping this mech army from really capitalizing on its strengths. If he can just keep this army back for a long enough period of time and starve RTG out, he can win this match. But he's still sitting at, yeah, he's got to get the macro going. Queen's in position. Looks like a handful of them momentarily will have enough for Spawn Broodling. At least maybe enough to, to clear the Siege Tank line. Lurkers sweeping in from behind. The Queen's in position. Several Lurkers dying before they're even able to plant. No scans. Hydralis sneaking up as well. There's one Spawn Broodling able to get on an additional Siege Tank. Elias not there to provide support. And it looks like, through a nice engagement, how dare you once again able to clean up that mech army. How dare you sitting at now 72 compared to 117, and a lot of that is in SCVs. He might have done it, actually, because the main of RTG is very thin. Natural expansion is still mining, but he's basically sealed into two bases, and mech is expensive. And spawn broodling is very, very cheap. How dare you running in loses a lurker diving in a little bit too aggressively. Another mech force there to greet the engagements. A queen able to pick up another another two siege tanks, but not before three of them are wiped out. The rest of that fleet going to back off. This is almost like Science Vessels, the Revenge. Another command center being established. Some Hydalus somehow sneaking through that line. How dare you can take this match, but he really needs to press... And deny additional bases and macro up. His natural expansion is still not mining. And it's kind of a difficult situation where he needs to macro both units and drones simultaneously. If RTG can just get bases up and established, still might be able to win it. He's sitting at 60 workers compared to 30. About where you want to be as a Terran. But he still has the problem with the queens in the air. He still has the problem with the drops that have been ha just absolutely everywhere. And the problem of getting this mech army in place and in a cohesive 
grouping to deal with this. Single Lurker being dropped. Bringing a lot of that army back to deal with it. Looks like it is going to get... Uh, does get wiped out, along with the Overlord. Having to draw a lot of this back. How dare you at least seize this expansion being built and grouped up. Zerglings and Lurkers making their way across. Middle of the map. Hatchery finally being taken in that upper right-hand base. Now we're seeing some of that macro come into play. But where's that, where's that Queen Fleet? And are there enough units now to engage this? Goliath slowly making the way out to the 3 o'clock location to go ahead and engage. Kind of a nice clump, although it's starting to thin out now as I say that. This hatchery, just as it spawns, looks like it's going to get wiped. Reinforcements streaming to try to defend it. And where are the queens? Looking for the queens. Do they have... There they are. Still waiting on a little bit of additional energy. Looks like some siege tanks wiped out. Need to be careful, though. Able to get additional spawn broodlings, but not enough. Well, maybe enough to save the hatchery. So how dare you able to defend again? However, with all of the overlord losses that he suffered. Looks like some more overlords getting wiped out there to the north. He's down to 70 supply and in the red at 54. Hatchery wiped out. Another siege tank army grouping up and how dare you has to do it with what he has on the ground. And I don't know that he had enough time to replenish energy with his, with his queen fleet. Trying to draw that army back with an attack but there's a siege tank and some goliaths there. I don't know that RTG is going to bait down on that. Hydralists are managing to get up into this 1 o'clock expansion. Some Goliaths following it up. SEVs fighting on the line. Siege tank to follow. And kind of a, I don't know, half capacity? Mech force making its way to the natural expansion once again. Hydralists cleared out. No SEVs killed by tank splash fire. And still plenty of SEVs on that line. RTG diving into the natural expansion. I think that's going to be all she wrote. The Queen Force is in the upper right-hand corner. I don't know that there's enough energy to completely clear this out. He's down to 18 drones. Just could never get his macro going. And should be able to just follow this up with a quick attack into the main. Plus, he's got the rest of these Goliaths and those siege tanks marching, it looks like, to everything that's upper right. The Queen's now getting a move on. And even if he cleans this attack force out in the bottom left, he's still got to worry about reinforcements taking out everything in the upper right. Plus, he just doesn't have a lot of drones to deal with the counter. The Goliaths engaging, well, might, might be engaging the Queens. Heads up before they're able to do spawn broodlings. Some Hydalists trying to engage right there. Yeah, already one getting taken out. This is, yeah, beefy losses. Not even able to get initial spawn broodlings off. And that hurts. Now just sealing up right there while he moves the rest of his army. So doing a two-pronged attack. So has, well, not really two-pronged, but two-front? Two-front attack. Zerglings trying to stream through to get on top of those siege tanks. The Goliaths very quickly cleaning them up. Manor Command Center. Oh my gosh. Ins RTG building inside How Dare You's base. Just to take it over, being like, get out of this game, basically. Which, yeah, I'm going to call it at this stage. That's brutal. This rude. Rude. Some spawn broodlings continuing. The bottom left, but that should be sufficient. Some ultralisks out of nowhere. Able to do some disruption here at the 1 o'clock. But this is honestly too little too late. Might be able to get additional damage done, but the rest of this... Yeah, the rest of what How Dare You has is going to get wiped out. He's down to 14 drones. Even if he... Yeah, going to call it right there. How Dare You dropping out. Nice attempt, but ends up losing game two. Which... is going to lead to a third match between these two. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.